everyone and welcome to the channel this is evan codes and today we're going to be learning a bunch of cool beginner topics in python and just what python is how to use it and uh, yeah we're going to get started just using our web browser today no need to download anything um, it's super simple and great to start log into your google account or create your gmail account if you haven't already um, and then just go to uh, google colab um, dot research dot google dot com. I'll throw the link down in the description, but uh, it's pretty easy to get to. It just saves uh, these little code segments we're going to work with into your Google Drive, so um, they're really easily accessible. So we're just going to start out by creating a new file. So I already have, but we're, we call these notebooks. So it's going to be a new notebook here. And once you're in the notebook, uh, you kind of have the same options as you do for uh, like a, a Word doc in your Google Drive. So you can rename it. So let's call this uh, my notebook. So once you've named your file, um, it will automatically save for you here. And there's essentially two fields you can put in here. Uh, you can either do uh, code or text. So let's start out with some text and um, whatever you type in the left side here uh, will kind of pop up on the right side and this is going to what it's going to look like to uh, you afterwards. So this is example and you can double click to get out of that. So this is how kind of a text box looks like, and you can click on that text box, move it up to the top, move it around. Um, so now this is a code block. Um, just to create a code block, you're just gonna hover over here and click code, and we're just gonna get started. So pretty much the most basic thing that you always wanna start with uh, when coding is just by printing out a hello world statement. So printing is just how you uh, get some feedback from your code to the user or yourself. Um, so to do that, print and uh, strings are you know any text that you want. Put these in quotes. So hello world, and if you just click the run, it's going to run this line of code and give you some output below. When you first jump in, it is a little bit slow, um, especially if you're loading uh, libraries or things like that. But uh, yeah, a couple seconds. Here we go. Hello world. So there, then we've completed our first uh, coding program. Uh, let's continue and we can kind of see what else we can do here. So I'm just gonna keep making separate little blocks. Um, and the big thing with the blocks here is that they just kind of work with each other. So if something is uh, defined in a previous block, uh, the next block also has um, access to it. Not even if it's the next block, uh, it doesn't really matter what order they are as long as it's compiled previously to running your new code. So for example, I can make a variable called a, and give it a value of five. If I run this, we've stored a into the program. So now down here, I can make another variable b, say that equals to three, and then another one c, that is equal to a plus b. And if we run this, it is going to grab the a from above and the b from below. So we, when we run this, um, doesn't give us anything, but we know that the value has been stored into C. So if we want to look at C, we can either just print C and run that. Gives us eight, perfect. So five plus three, good. And if we go down again uh, with Python or with this uh, collabs, you don't even really need to use the print uh, to print see what's in something. So you can just use C and uh, click and that will just give us what's in the variable C. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at quickly is how to make comments in here. So like you've seen before, you can either put a little uh, block of text um, to give a description, or actually in your code segment, um, you can start with a hashtag and uh, say something um, that you might want to just remember or a quick description about the code. Um, so these lines are not going to be executed. So moving forward, if we want to uh, now look at a conditional statement. Um, so a conditional statement kind of uh, says uh, if some condition, uh, we want to perform some action. Um, so I'll say this is our if statement. So if, um, let's say, A is greater than B, 
then we want to perform some action. Um, so this is kind of how the if statement is uh, formatted. We can say yes if the action is going to be executed. So we know a is indeed greater than b uh, because a is 5. So if a is greater than b, so we'll execute uh, and we'll print yes. So as you can see, yes is printed, so this works. But what if uh, we say a is smaller than b? So let's make a new block here. We can copy this code, paste it down into our new block. And now if we say if a is smaller than b, print yes. Here, nothing will print because a is not smaller than b. So in this case, we need to add a else clause. Uh, so this will happen uh, for any other condition other than a is smaller than b. So if we say else with a colon as well, we can print yes. Else. If we execute this, now we will say yes else. So it skips over this and goes to the next. Another useful tool in coding are loops. A loop is helpful if, say, you want to print uh, a range of numbers, cycle through something, or um, it's just useful for a lot of different cases. So uh, let's start out with a for loop. And for this, uh, I guess the goal would be to print, say, five numbers um, in a row. We can start out by saying for i in range of 5. And same thing with the if else statements. Uh, you use a colon, and anything you want to execute inside of the loop will be indented below this. So in here, we can just say print i. And what this is going to do is for every element in a range of 5, we're going to print that element. So when we run this, we see it prints 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's five elements. However, it's not 1 to 5 because numbering and coding generally will start at 0. So if we want to fix this and get the numbers 1 through 5, we can just add 1 uh, to each of the i's. And if we run that, we have 1 through 5. Now you can use these two topics together. So if I want to say use a for loop with an if statement, we can go for, let's make it a little bit bigger this one time, i in range 10, colon. And inside of this, we can use a conditional statement, which is, we'll say, if i is smaller than 5, let's print something. So we'll start by printing maybe apple then use our else statement else so that would count for everything uh, greater than five would print let's do orange so this block of code will run 10 times in the for loop and the first five terms will be apple second five should be orange so let's try and see how this goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So that's how you can combine these together. Notice that um, we've indented twice. Everything inside the first indent will be ran inside of the for loop, and everything inside of the second indent will be ran within the um, if and else statement. The next topic uh, I'd like to go over are uh, using lists. Um, so before we just uh, printed out all these items one after another. They're not saved anywhere. Um, they're just sent to the user. But if we wanted to save these items into a list, we can use a list. So if we say my list, and this is just a variable name, it can be whatever you want, equals, and to define a list, we use these square brackets. We'll say apple, orange, banana, Oops, banana. And this has created a list containing three items, uh, apple, orange, and banana. So if I make another block of code and we just say my list, this is gonna show us the items in the list. As you can see, apple, orange, banana. To access items in your list, you can refer to them with the same numbering that we uh, learned before with the for loop. So it's gonna start at zero. Apple will be zero, orange will be one, banana will be two. So if we say want to, uh, get the second value of the list orange out of here, we would say my list square brackets and say one, because that would be the second item counting from zero, zero, one. 
when we run this, it'll return orange. Um, now to add other items to a list, you can't just say my list three equals something because the list is an object and we need to use methods uh, to add or remove items properly. So you can see this list index is out of range. That means the list is closed after three items. If we're trying to add the fourth item, which is index number three, um, it won't allow it. So what we need to do instead is say my list dot append, and then in brackets, we can add, uh, what if we add a Kiwi? When we run this, you can see it worked. And if we run my list again, um, we can just run it up here. We can see the list now has Kiwi in it. If we want to add multiple items, we can so say my list dot extend. And here we can add another array of anything we want. So lists can be of the same type, of different types. Um, so if we wanted to just add a, num a bunch of numbers into this list, we can say one, two, three, four, and add this. It will extend the list and add anything in here onto the back of it. So if we run the list again, it'll have our fruit plus four numbers. The cool thing with uh, objects, so anything that um, essentially you have a period uh, afterward, is you can just type that object name and put your period, and you can see what functions they have included. So if I wanted to clear the list, um, I could just click clear, add my brackets to it because it's a function, run it. And if I run my list again, now it's empty. So that's how we can save some items. Um, you can use these lists inside of loops. You can use these lists with conditional statements. Um, it's a really powerful tool to uh, get you started with coding. So this is where we're going to end today. Uh, we've learned how to add, remove, and extend items to lists and create them. Uh, we've learned conditional statements and for loops and just a bunch of other basic topics here. So. Uh, we'll continue to make these and get a little bit more advanced uh, with Python. I'm just This is a really great platform to work on. Uh, you don't have to install anything on your computer. And yeah, so thanks for tuning in. And if you've enjoyed this, please consider uh, liking and subscribing. I'll be coming out with more of these intro videos as well as a bunch of cool videos on practical applications of coding.